Greetings, ladies and mendigants, and welcome to this latest episode of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Out space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. The links to all the stories will be down below, and as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider subscribing. Story number one. The Witness, written by Joe2 underscore zero. He ran a hand along the slab of metal before him, the pads of the ditches feeding each hand etched letter. He was an ancient mechanism, this thing, the bringer of destruction. It had been to many places and brought hell with it each time. He had began to read each inscription in order, even though he didn't precisely know what they were. Tunisia, Italy, France, Germany. Here the inscriptions changed. Someone else had begun scratching into the side of the thing. Korea, Vietnam. Another change. This seemed more recent, but just still badly faded and worn, but readable. Kuwait, Iraq, Afghanistan. They became less faded here, with another change in the style of the carvings in the metal. Ukraine, Russia. Another change. How old was this? He shook his head. Luna, Mars, Io, Ganymede. Yet another change. They seemed different this time, like they were discolored from heat. Proxima. He knew that one. His father had told him about it. He had been there for a terrible battle. Tau Seti. His father had told him about that one, too. Horror stories. But now he knew what they were true. Bernard Star. Another place his father had been. There were more inscriptions all over this thing. But from there, a specific one caught his eye. It looked like it was meant to be there, unlike the hand-scratched or carved inscriptions. S number 000326, GBT INSP. Browning Machine Gun Caliber dot fifty M2 manufactured by Colts Patent Firearm Manufacturing Company, Hartford, Connecticut, USA, 1923. The young Volker struck his head as he laid himself down in the dropship's bay and racked the machine gun's charging handle twice, loading the first round into the chamber. Seating on his haunches and forelegs, his eyes lined up a perfect and rudimentary aperture sights on the gun. As they sped towards the insertion point, he thought about how much the gun had seen and bore witness to, the Terran own wars, the wars of his race, and their eventual alliance. For that matter, he may as well have been the first non-Terran to have lain hands on it. He thought about that for a moment as the dropship came into the LZ and into enemy fire. The combined Terran Volker force began to disembark, and he pushed down on the odd double trigger with his thumbs covering his comrades. Tung, 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 tung. Brass clinked to the floor of the troop bay, and black spring steel links flew out of the side. Tung, 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 tung. He focused the blast on each shot, feeding something akin to a being teleported at the bottom of a swimming pool. Even with a large aircrew headset and a being had to correct the sight of the muzzle. Tunk, 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 tunk. The dropship began to lift off. As he kept firing below, the enemy broke contact and began to retreat. As the forces that they'd landed pursued, as the gun's rounds threw up fountains of dirt and viscera from amongst the enemy... Tung, 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 clank. The belt was finished, and the LZ withdrew from sight as they sped away. He rotated the mount inside the dropship and pulled the side door closed, locking and sealing it as they climbed out of the atmosphere. He looked again at the machine gun, his machine gun, thoughtfully for a long while before their ascent, as if pondering, was it a Terran Custman? Did the all soldiers do it? Or was it just this gun, this witness of war? He pulled out his knife, and then his point began to carve. End of story number one. Story number two. Above all, human, 
written by erratic architect. When humans entered the galactic stage, it changed things forever. Each of the six great empires attempted to gain favor of these peculiar sentients. If the humans joined any one of them, it would have increased the empire's hold, both militarily and politically. But for all of that, the humans were agreeable. They denied becoming a vassal to any of them. At first, this angered the six. But slowly, the coalescing Seventh Empire did something surprising. They shared. Their medicines were adapted to the other species. Their technologies were mass-produced and merged with what the empires had. Their communications network, the internet, was not just open to war but made available as quickly as the humans could build network stations after network station. Their ships appeared in the battlefield not as conquerors, but as emergency crews who would help and save many as they could, no matter what side. Their diplomats found the compromise in any argument and repaired the relationships to asunder millennia ago. Their planners created precise and efficient systems of economics, housing, and even ecosystems, no matter the planet, no matter the challenges. Their explorers mapped Herithro uncharted parts of the galaxy, places previously deemed too dangerous to explore. Their scientists pushed the boundaries of what was thought possible. Even in the darkest nights, the humans shined a light on everything that they could. This wouldn't have been so surprising if the other empires had looked more closely at human history. The human empire was one that brought its stability, order, and advances to every place it touched, even beyond its borders. Even with the wars and the social issues, humans ever strove to the best they could be, bringing everything else with them without even trying the Seventh Empire became a prominent member of the galaxy. But the Third Empire, that of the Basilan, took issue with the humans. The Basilan were aggressive expanders and conquerors. The altruism of the cooperation that the humans showed only strengthened the other empires and made it more difficult for the Basilan to lash out in the ways that they were used to. And with technology far better suited to battle than the humans had ever managed to accomplish, an all-out war was in their favor. The humans were pushed back slowly but surely to their home planet of Earth. It was there in their final hour that the humans' true strength showed that they won the war. There was no secret weapon or sudden winning tactic that the humans were part of. The Bastlin were always better suited at war. Rather, fleet. After fleets of ship arrived from the other empires, from the smallest of the Termex to the largest of the Rayquins, it was the first time in five thousand years that so many empires had joined together to fight in unison, and it was a death blow to the third great empire. The humans at their seventh empire had changed things permanently. No longer were there petty squabbles or selfish hoarding. The humans had shown everyone that if they but tried, they could be better. That they too could reach out and touch the impossible. Humans were never the strongest or the smartest. They instead wielded the most unlikely of weapons. It was a small and simple, mighty yet humble. But above all else, it was human. Hope. End of story number two. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider subscribing. If you wish to support the author, there is a link to the original story, so pop over there and give him your support. If you wish to support this channel, however, there are a few ways to do so. The best and easiest would be to share this video with other people, as well as liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. All of these things tell the algorithm that this channel is at least vaguely interesting, and that may share it with other people. If you wish to support the channel in some other manner, watching my other videos would also help tremendously. Or, if you really, really, really like, there is a link down below to leave a tip or to join the Patreon. Any and all support is very much appreciated. And I hope that you all have a good one until the next time. And I'll see you then. Cheers.